Today, we are looking for the pretty rare Matsutake mushroom. Another name for it is a pine mushroom. Where we've been finding these things is under some spruce trees or under pine trees, growing under this dry stuff. And what I'm looking for is these little humps. There's really nothing exposed out of the soil. So all it takes is looking for these little irregular bumps in the ground and moving the pine needles. And sure enough, this is a sweet example of like a really beautiful patch. And even right here, see there's like a, between these two patches, there's this little bump. And if I pull this aside, there's a beautiful one sitting right there. Give them a little bit of a shake and pop them straight up. One of the ways that you can identify them, there's often this whitish gray base on the bottom. We're in sandy soil right now, so it's turned it a little bit grayish, but you can also see where there's mud, it's turned gray as well. Another way is that the stem and the head are completely closed with this kind of light veil. And if you pull that back a little ways, you can see that there's a, just a network of gills that are growing underneath that cap. As they grow, this cap gets a lot bigger and that veil sort of opens up. So this, the cap sort of separates from the stem. And because of its sort of strandy texture that it has, you can grab that veil. You can almost peel it back with your fingers and just cleaning it up becomes really easy to get that sand off. You're not even really carving with your knife, you're just kind of allowing the blade to grab that skin on the outside and peel it off. So as I'm trimming up this base, I'm also looking for little tiny holes. And those holes are indicators of worms that have crawled up through the ground and have made their way through the mushroom. This has a huge base on it and you can see the head is completely chewed up. And uh, I'll pull the base apart here for you to see as well. But you can see all of those lines that the worms took from the bottom up to the cap. And this is just one of those mushrooms you leave in the woods. But if something does have some worms in it, don't be too worried about it. Bring it home and uh, clean it up and see if there's kind of, I don't know, too many. And if there's a lot and you feel uncomfortable, just don't eat it. Before I throw this in the pail, I'm just gonna make sure that I brush this off and even a a little tiny like dish towel or a rag that you can keep in your pocket to brush off the cap of pretty much any mushroom is really ideal before you head home. This size, this kind of like fit in your palm sort of size is the perfect size eater. So I'll show you the texture of these things. This mushroom is so dense, like I'm squeezing this extremely hard and it's hardly compressing the sides. So it has a really good meaty texture to it. If I pull it apart, you see it sort of has this like cheese string sort of texture to it. And it has these long grains and strands through it. So when you slice this up and cook it, or just even grill them whole, the chew is so amazing. And that's one of the things that makes this so prized. It's very much so a texture mushroom. But fortunately, it also has a beautiful aroma and taste to it. You never really want to eat a wild mushroom that you forage raw. You always want to cook it first. And this is one of the few mushrooms that you can actually pull off a piece, you can shave it really, really thin, again, due to its texture, and you can eat these just raw while you're out in the woods. If you have a little bit of salt and pepper in your pocket, or a little lemon squeeze, it's amazing. And look at that, that is just like a perfect, clean example of a premium Matsutake.